previous lesson, we dealt with a type of sequence called an arithmetic sequence. And in all of those sequences, each, not each term in the sequence followed a palette pattern of having a common difference. Well, in this lesson, we're going to talk about sort of the flip side, where instead of having a common difference between each term in the sequence, we're going to have what's called a common ratio. Or instead of adding or subtracting a number to get from one term in the sequence to the next, we're now going to be multiplying by a certain number to get from one term to the next. These sequences are called geometric sequences. In the pink shape here, I have two examples of geometric sequences. The first example starts with the number 3, and then as we go further on from term to term, notice how each term is multiplied by 4 to get to the next term. So 3 times 4 is 12, 12 times 4 is 48, and 48 times 4 is 192, and then this pattern will continue. The second example is also an example of a geometric sequence, but the first term is negative, so negative 2, and then to get to the next term, we have to multiply by negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and then negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16, and so on and so forth. So those are two examples of geometric sequences. Where before we had a common difference, which we used the letter D, in these examples we're going to have a common ratio, which we use the letter R. So the pattern of the geometric sequence, or what the general term will end up looking like, exists in a pattern where we start with the first term in the sequence being A. That doesn't change. The second term in the sequence is now whatever the first term was, A, times that common ratio. So in that first example, it's times 4. The third term in the sequence, again, begins with that first term, but then multiplies it by the common ratio twice. So we multiply it by 4 once to get to the second term, and then by 4 again to get to the third term, or 4 squared. And this pattern repeats itself. So we eventually get to the fifth term, where it's just the first term in the sequence times the common ratio to the exponent 4. Notice how we're always taking it to an exponent of n minus 1, or whatever the term in the sequence is minus 1. So this leads us to our general term where tn, or the nth term in our sequence, will equal the first term in our sequence times the common ratio to the exponent n minus 1, or n minus 1 common ratios away from the first term. Here's an example of what I mean. So take the sequence 2, 6, 18, and 54. It may be obvious to see what the different ratios are to get from one term to the next. But as a little help, if you can't tell, so let's say the numbers aren't so clean. 2, 6, 18, those are all whole numbers, and we can sort of easily see that they're all multiples of, th or so you multiply by 3 to get from one to the next. But let's say that wasn't as obvious. The common ratio will always equal whatever term, pick any term that you want, so let's say term 2, divided by the term directly before it. So term 2 divided by term 1, in this case, 6 divided by 2, is equal to 3. Again, this works for, let's say, the fourth and third term. So term 4 divided by term 3, well, that ratio is equal to 54 over 18, which, again, is equal to 3. This is sort of a proof, or a way to prove, that a sequence is geometric. If the ratio between the, any term and the term before it is the same, so 3, 3, and then if we took even term n and divided it by the term before that, which is n minus 1, right, that's the term before n, that should also equal 3 in this example. Uh, so this is sort of a proof to prove that it's geometric, but it also tells you the common ratio if you can't figure it out just by looking at it. So going back to 2, 6, 18, and 54, we can rewrite this as starting with 2 as the first term. The second term is 2 times 3. 
where 3 is the r. The third term is 2 times r squared, or 2 r's, or in this case 3 squared. And then the fourth term is 2 times 3 to the exponent 3. Sort of the exact same thing we were talking about before. So our common, uh, sorry, not our common, but our general term, Tn, is equal to a times r to the n minus 1. 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. Now, this is as simplified as this gets, but I want to caution you. So, a huge beware. This does not equal 6 to the exponent n minus 1. And I want you to think about why that's true. Remember, bed mass says that you must do exponents before you can multiply. So this exponent n minus 1 only belongs to the 3. It does not belong to the 2. So if you multiply the 2 and the 3, you are saying that the n minus 1 is now also applying to the 2. But that's not true. So do not make this mistake by multiplying the 2 and the 3 together when you have an exponent of n minus 1 or any other exponent on the outside. So this is incorrect. Don't do it. Let's look at an example. So with the sequence 1, negative 2, 4, negative 8, and so on, let's figure out Tn, or the general term. For a geometric sequence, again, the formula was Tn is equal to a times r to the n minus 1. Again, you're going to need to memorize this, but just like the previous one for arithmetic sequence, it shouldn't be too difficult. So do I know values for a and r is the question. Well, the a value is always the first term. So a is equal to 1. Easy enough. The r value is my common ratio. So what do I multiply to get from 1 to the next? Well, it looks as though each time I get to my next term, I'm multiplying by negative 2. So my r value is negative 2. Therefore, my tn, or my general term, is equal to a, 1, times r, negative 2, to the exponent n minus 1. And if we have a 1 multiplied by anything, you don't really need to write the 1. So this, in fact, simplifies to negative 2 to the exponent n minus 1. It is important to put a bracket around the negative 2 because the negative is also included with that exponent n minus 1. Don't forget the brackets. But this is it. That's as simplified as we get. And that's as easy as these questions are. Here's our last example we're going to see in this lesson. Classify the following sequences as either arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So I guess what we're looking for is does it have a common difference, a common ratio, or neither a common difference or common ratio? Look at A. Negative 1, negative 4, negative 7, negative 10. Can you immediately see if there's a common difference or a common ratio? Well, hopefully you notice that this does indeed have a common difference. So I have an A value here of negative 1, and I have a common difference, d, where each term in the sequence is subtracted by 3 to get to the next. So we could write a general term for this sequence. And I'll just write it out for you. I, the question didn't ask for it, but I'll write it anyway. So the general term, remember, for a geomet for an arithmetic sequence is a plus n minus 1 times d. So a plus n minus 1 times d which would equal negative 1 plus n minus 1 times negative 3. And I'll let you continue to simplify this out. We can see that this will end up equaling 2 plus oh, 
we can see that this will end up equaling 2 minus 3n. On to b. Negative 2, 6, negative 18, 54, and so on. Does this have a common difference, a common ratio, or neither? Well, to go from negative 2 to 6, I can either add 8, but to go from 6 to negative 18, 6 plus 8 does not equal negative 18. It equals 14. So let's try multiplying. Negative 2 times negative 3 equals 6. 6 times negative 3 equals negative 18. And negative 18 times negative 3 is 54. So this looks geometric. And indeed it is. The a value is negative 2. The r value, or my common ratio, is equal to negative 3. So my general term, remember, is a times r to the exponent n minus 1, or negative 2 times negative 3 to the exponent n minus 1. This first number here, I guess doesn't need the brackets, but so I could write this as negative 2 times negative 3 to the n minus 1. Both are the same. So the first was arithmetic, the second was geometric. What about the third? 2 over 81, 4 over 27, 8 over 9. So not only am I now asking is this arithmetic, geometric, or neither, but once you figure it out, I want you to find what the general term is and then figure out in which position the term 6,912 is. Don't be confused. I don't want to know what the 6,912th term is. I want to know where or what term number 6,912 is in the sequence. I'm going to leave that for you to figure out, and we will take this question up in class. You may need to use some guess and check at one point, but that's the only clue I'm going to give you. Okay, maybe I'll give you one more hint. Look at the numerators and look at the denominators. Does that give you any indication as to what type of sequence this could be? Alright, I'll let you work on it now on your own. We'll see you in class where we take up this question. And don't forget your homework, where again, there are more enrichment questions for you to try if you think that this stuff is just too easy. See you then, and good luck.